road or beside the road that they're interested in, butterflies need water. And often where there's a mud puddle, where the mud's almost dried up, that's the easiest way for them to get moisture into them. And you'll see them flocking around an almost dried up mud puddle. Hundreds sometimes. Uh, it's just because that's where the good stuff is. Oh. There might be something on the road that they were attracted to. Um, uh, the, the road, if you come here in the um, early spring, we spent the winter trying to keep this road open using standard highway techniques including salt. The salt gets into cracks in the road and the deer and the squirrels spend a lot of time out there in the middle of the road <laughs> saying it's more important that they get that salt than they get out of your way. <laughs> and so uh, that happens for quite a while. And you, people say, well, why are the deer all hanging around the yellow line on the center? <laughs> well, because when they made the road, they paved one side and then they paved the other. There's a crack all the way down the middle of the road. So that's why that, that holds the salt. Right here, there's a depression in the ground. Oh, wait, you had a question. Where was it? Uh, you had a question, right? The, uh, oh, you. Oh, you. Okay. The dump. He asked, is there, was there once a dump here to draw the bears? Up until about 1969, the National Park Service hadn't figured out, don't feed the wildlife. And to entertain the people up here in Big Meadows, back that road, back a little ways, there's a dump area, and we use it now for non-edible things, uh, used fire grates, things like that that are no longer usable. But they were dumping garbage from the restaurants there. And they bring everybody out at night in the evening to watch the bears feed. <laughs> All right. We learned lessons. One is that bears that learn people are a source of food come after people saying, give me the food. <laughs> Second thing is, bears are never full. <laughs> so we started having uh, property damage of bears going after food and coolers, things like that. And we said, no more. Let's put up signs. It's illegal to feed the bears, even for us. You've got to store your food out of sight, out of smell from the bears. You see the sign when you go up towards the campground. This is bear country. Proper food storage required. You can get a nasty citation if you disobey that law. <coughs> All right? Because we're protecting your lives and your property. Bears are very smart, but they have all the food they need out here in the woods. They're just lazy like we are. <laughs> and that, well, they'd rather have whatever's easier to get to. Okay? And so um, if you. Uh, place a hamburger out there, I'm going to get it first. The bear hadn't got a chance. <laughs> but but uh, the, the, uh, the things that you have to be aware of the animals, so they stop doing that. That, that, that dump is no longer there, right? Um, the, uh, there's a depression in the ground here. I don't see many other depressions like that. This was probably, but not guaranteed, some burrowing animal had built his home under the soil here and later on it collapsed down. Normal. You won't find any depressions like that caused by an animal just a little further down because the soil is way, the, the water table is way too close to the surface. Here we're still start, part way up the hill. More likely we'd find it way up there where the, so, the water table is further down from the soil. So it, it's, it's one of those things that probably was an animal here. So I'm going to say maybe a groundhog, maybe a skunk. They, they, they tend to use those kind of homes. Uh, uh, and uh, few other things. What about moles? Moles would not make a hole that big, okay. but yes, moles we have here. Moles, voles, mice, uh, lots of kinds of rodents, uh, and that also makes it wonderful for what and, and insects. Boy, we got insects, and I don't know if you've seen these nice, neat flying birds that are taking all kinds of turns. Those Swallows. are barn swallows. Oh, barn swallows. And they are uh, um, just looking for uh, the insects in the air. Okay, and they're finding them and chewing them up. Thank you, birds. And so there's lots of things out here, all kinds of uh, um, animals, birds, insects. Because of things like the uh, rabbits that might be out here or groundhogs, uh, maybe not groundhogs, rabbits, um, and, the, and the mice, you're going to find hawks hunting out here. I have a, a beautiful photograph, which took a lot of time to get of a red-tailed hawk coming off the meadow with a bowl in his talons. Awesome. I mean, he's got wings in the air and all bit. It's just gorgeous. And it took me 45 minutes of watching him and trying to get, gain his trust to allow me to be close enough for my telephoto lens 
to catch him coming up off the ground. And it, he kept moving from one tree to another, and then I'd walk diagonally, so I wasn't approaching him, but gradually decreasing the distance, and then he'd take off. I'd do it again, get a little closer, and after a while, he wasn't looking at me anymore. And I said, okay, I'm not gonna move either now, because he's accepting me as part of the nature, and I saw him just go out of that tree into a glide, go down, wham, come back up to the same tree, and he had that, that bull in his talons. Uh, we've seen, I haven't seen, but some, some of our other rangers have seen a, a, uh, uh, a rabbit get taken that way. Um, I've seen red-shouldered hawks use this meadow. And I'm going to talk about some others in just a few minutes when we get down a little further. So let's go down a little further.